Neil for being our Masters of Ceremony at the banquet. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Not sure where he is at this moment, but I want to thank Tam Zarnick for um, having uh, the hospitality room and hosting it for our attendees. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you, Tam. And most of all, I want to thank you for coming here because I know, um, you know, it's a it's a, a costly thing to travel, and to, I appreciate your time and your effort um, and the expense of coming to our convention. And I really appreciate that you're here and showing your support. And I look forward to seeing you next year um, at our convention in Dallas. For uh, the final statements, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Robert Zubrin. Please welcome him. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'd just like to reiterate, uh, and this is not pro forma, um, my thanks to the people who organized this conference, who made it possible, uh, the Ohio chapter uh, especially, uh, but also, uh, of course, Pat Zarnick, Lucinda, uh, and uh, others uh, that, that aren't even here, Sue Martin, Freya Jackson, um, and, and, and many others. Th this stuff, uh, just do it doesn't happen by itself, and uh, this was really a bang-up job, and, and uh, I'm really um, grateful to the people who put out the effort. Not, no one got a dime to do all the work that was done, um, and uh, a lot was done. So, um, uh, I might want to mention in, on the such of money, uh, we did raise about $11,000 uh, last night at the banquet. And, uh, and that's a good thing. And that, that is also, obviously, it's both needed, but it's also a demonstration of the kind of commitment that is needed more broadly and is what makes everything happen. Now, um, a lot's been said at the convention here, and there isn't really that much to add uh, that hasn't been said. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it's useful to underline the subject, OK? We're in a battle. Um, it's a big battle. Um, it, it's an important one. Um, we have uh, a, um, a uh, possibilities for things to move in, in uh, very different directions at this point. Uh, the situation was thrown into flux uh, when uh, Bush and Griffin left office. There was a certain program in place that was ripped up. Um, and that program was, was not perfect f from our point of view, hardly. I mean, I, those of you who've been to previous conventions know that I was quite critical of many aspects of it. But at least it was something, at least it would have given us a heavy lift booster and a capsule and an interplanetary throw stage, about half the hardware set we needed to go to Mars. Uh, at least it was a way to have some form of progress in our space program. The, uh, what happened in February, the thing was, uh, there was a put-up job. Um, John Holdren, Barack Obama's science advisor, is a longtime enemy of human space flight uh, and a longtime enemy, frankly, of uh, industrial civilization and technological progress. And you can verify that if you look up the, the books that he has co authored with a man named Paul Ehrlich, who's a, uh, an ardent advocate of the whole zero growth thesis that human. Uh, 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 growth needs to stop, be stopped, industrial growth, population growth, technological progress, it's all got to stop. And in fact, that he calls the United States an overdeveloped country that needs to be deindustrialized. And if you read these books, they're amazing because whenever they use the word progress, they put it in quotes. And uh, in other words, they can't even say the word progress with a straight face. Uh, our more advanced civilization, blah, blah, okay, uh, out of their deep concern for the people in Africa, they wanted to prevent them from having to live under the conditions that we live today um, and would prefer, actually, that it go the other way. Um, but so uh, the space program at is, of course, the – well, space program is two things, isn't it? Space program – NASA, the government space program, which, after all, is the main space program that actually exists. Um, as opposed to the private one that we're all hoping will emerge. But the one that has existed up till now is the NASA program. And it has two sides to it, doesn't it? 
there, there is, as its opponents say, there's this huge wasteful bureaucracy uh, and it does wasteful things and it's uh, bureaucratic and, and, and you name it. Uh, on the other hand, there is NASA as the symbol of the pioneer spirit. There is NASA as the symbol of the can-do American spirit. We can do anything. Uh, and uh, of self-reliance, ingenuity, uh, the uh, ability of progress to make things possible that were never possible before. Okay? Um, and after all, when we went to the moon, what was it fundamentally saying? It was saying, free people can do anything. There is no challenge that is beyond us. Okay? And there are no limits to human aspirations. And human aspirations do not be, need to be constrained in order to uh, fit within certain limits that some people might want to impose upon us. And it's the defiance of that. So there's these two aspects to it. So what? So NASA, not as bold as it was in the 60s by any means, but still, under the previous plan, OK, we're returning to the moon. We're going back to where we were the last time we made that statement, and presumably we would go on from there. And they killed that program, and they killed it with malice aforethought because, look, there has been for any number of years a certain faction of people in this country who say, look, you know, we have other needs. The space program is absorbing all this money, even though, frankly, it's not all that much. It's uh, half a percent of the federal budget at this point. But still, $19, $20 billion is not pocket change. We'd like to spend it on something else. I can respect that point of view. There are other needs to be met, and one could debate which the money should be spent on. But they didn't do that. They didn't cut NASA's budget in order to spend the money on social programs, or housing projects, or highway repairs, or body armor for the troops, or tax reductions. Okay? The, 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 they didn't cut the NASA budget at all. They just aborted the program. Okay? And instead of having NASA spend its money to restate what it said before, to restate that America still has the stuff, that we still adhere to the pioneer spirit, that we're still willing to take risks to do great things and prove that the impossible is possible, okay, uh, they said, fine, we'll give you the money, okay, because we know all you really care about are your jobs. So we'll give you $3 billion a year to refurbish the shuttle launch pads after the shuttle stops flying. I'm not making this up. Okay. You know, the, 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 originally they wanted to kill the Orion altogether, but finally under great pressure when there was pushback, okay, they said, well, look, we understand. You don't want to be able to send Americans to orbit. All you care about are your jobs. So we'll give you your jobs. You can have your Orion money. We don't care, just so long as it can't take astronauts to orbit. So we'll give you an Orion that goes down and not up. I mean, this is incredible. Okay? I mean, I've never seen anything like this. Carter wrecked the space program, but at least he took the money and spent it on something else. One could argue about whether that was good. I don't think it was, but at least it was uh, uh, on the level in the sense of saying, I want to take this money and spend it on something I think is more valuable. And now, you know, they say, well, okay, you, you don't like the shuttle program shutting down. So why don't we keep the shuttle program going, except we won't actually fly any shuttles? Or maybe we'll fly one, you know. And so this is incredible. It is degrading, okay, to NASA. It's degrading to everyone in NASA to be told this. You're only objecting to the shutdown of the program because it's your paycheck. What will give you your paycheck? How's that? We just don't want you to accomplish what you claim you're trying to accomplish. I mean, think how degrading that is, okay. And yet they cynically do exactly that. And uh, now, you know, uh, Cicero said, gifts make slaves. Okay? You give people handouts and they become dependent and they lose their integrity and they lose their self-reliance and they lose their ability to do anything. Okay? The, the, and they become something less than what they were before. 
And the space program, if we have a space program which is just taking handouts but not being asked to do anything, it's going to become something less than it was before, and visibly so. And while it was debatable whether we should be spending $4 billion a year on a shuttle program that was launching six shuttles to orbit a year, because that really is frankly pretty inefficient, okay, of shuttles at $700 million dollars a launch to launch the same thing that a proton could launch at 70 million dollars each. It becomes surreal when one talks about paying four billion dollars a year to launch one shuttle or no shuttles, okay, uh, and redecorate the pads because all you people really care about is the jobs. This is not a space exploration program, this is a jobs program and you people are not engineers, you are welfare recipients. Okay, the, uh, okay, so now the positive side of this, that it was sufficiently outrageous that it actually outraged a lot of people, a lot of people, people in Congress, people in the president's own party, Neil Armstrong, who's been a total recluse for the past, you know, 40 years, came out and said, I can't accept this. This guy has never said anything. Okay. Um, he came out and said it. Now, we were, true to form, basically first to denounce this policy. First, I am proud to say. Okay. First to denounce the Augustine policy. The Augustine board was created. Oh, John Holdren appointed Augustine, appointed the members of the Augustine Commission, and they reported to him. And he told them when they gave him the answers they wanted. Okay, and this thing with the flexible path, what's that? Flexible path. Let me tell you something. I worked for Norm Augustine at Martin Marietta Company, and he did not believe in the flexible path then. He did not believe in having programs have no schedules. He did not believe in programs having no specific goals. This is not Norm Augustine's management philosophy in anything that he actually cares about. So to say that this is the program that the space shuttle should, uh, space program should adopt, no concrete objectives, no concrete goals, work on interesting things and let us know when you're ready to do something. Okay, sure, we'll just give you money and you don't really have to do anything by any particular time. No, this is a put up job. Okay, I denounced it and Space News is a path to nowhere when they were basically enunciating it and then of course when the administration actually came out with it as their policy. But now we have allies. We have allies precisely because the policy is so bad. Okay, uh, They have outraged so many people and that has created flux in the situation. If they had just come out with something that was half bad, we would have been left isolated. Um, the, a lot of people said, well it's okay, I guess fine, you know, let's move on. Uh, but no, this has just been too crazy. Uh, so we have first the Senate committee and now the full United States Senate dominated almost 60% by members of the president's own party pass, okay, a uh, uh, authorization bill that completely contradicts the administration's policy. It says, no, this is wrong, we're not doing it. Okay, uh, now unfortunately, okay, well, it compromises uh, because you say, well, you know, they're saying we get nothing, we'd like something, that something's better than nothing and we're willing to compromise. But still, They've got a bill with money in there to develop heavy lift. We have to get that to pass. Okay, we have to deliver this defeat okay, to the Obama administration. Okay, um, and to let them know what the score is here. That they can't just take a major American institution that even more than an institution, a symbol of a great American value, the pioneer spirit. You know, we went to bat for Hubble against Sean O'Keefe.